Hello and welcome to this electrical principles training video. In a previous video in this series we were looking at resistors connected in parallel and we were doing some circuit analysis on that. So we were looking at the individual currents flowing through each resistor and how that added up to give us different currents in different places including the total current. Now what we're going to do in this video is complete that process looking at steps three and four and you can kind of view those steps as being either a way of confirming your initial result with your uh, total current for the circuit or you can view it as a completely different way of doing it if you're not really interested in the individual currents within the circuit. So we'll crack on, we'll look at steps three and four for this process. So what we're going to do is we're going to uh, look at this, we're going to figure out what the total um, resistance of the circuit is. So step three, so step three is to try and figure out what the total resistance of the circuit is. So here we're going to say, and uh, you may remember this from when we uh, did our calculations on resistors in parallel, if not, then for a detailed explanation of it, then go back and watch those videos. But you can see here, what we're gonna end up with is that one over RT is going to be equal to one over R1 plus one over R2 plus one over R3. So you can see there that we've got this formula, which may look familiar to you if you've seen my other videos or if you've been through this already, but if not, then please go back and watch that because it does explain why this works the way it does. But here what we're doing is we're using the reciprocals of these values in order to figure out what the total resistance of the circuit is going to be. So uh, we put the numbers in, so we've got our formula. Now we put the numbers in, so one over RT is going to be equal to one over R1, which is 20 ohms, so one over 20. <laughs> And then we've got one over R2, which was 80. And then we've got one over R3, which is 60. There we go. Now at this stage, a really cruel uh, kind of tutor would start to uh, make you add these fractions together in the proper way by finding the lowest common denominator and doing all that stuff, which probably wouldn't be too difficult in this case, but I think it might get a little bit more confusing. What we're really interested in here is trying to figure out what the total resistance is quickly so we can find the total current and confirm that we get the same answer. So we're going to cheat a little bit. So what we're going to say is that 1 over RT is equal to, and then we're going to use this trick that I've shown you before on the calculator, uh, but I think it's the first time I've shown you on the Casio FX85 GTX. I uh, showed it on my previous calculator, but that's uh, that's gone now. So let's have a look at this. So what we're going to do, if you remember, this button here, x to the minus 1, is the same as the one over x uh, function. So in other words, if I go 20 and then press x to the minus one, 20 to the power of minus one is exactly the same as one over 20. And again, I've done a video that explains exactly why that is, so please check that out if you get a minute. And then we've got, uh, we're gonna add to that uh, 80 to the minus one, which again is one over 80, plus 60 to the minus one, which again is one over 60. Add those together and we get this calculation here. Now it gives us rather a nasty fraction uh, if we, uh, rather a nasty, nasty decimal I should say if we uh, press the SD button, so we'll keep it as a fraction. So one over RT is equal to 19 over 240. Now if we were to put the decimal value in there, which we certainly could do, uh, we would, uh, the next stage of the calculation, we'd probably lose a little bit of accuracy depending on how far we rounded that off to. So I'm going to leave this as a fraction and just show you a really nice kind of little trick on how we can now figure out what the total resistance is. And that is very simply just to turn both sides of the equation upside down. So if we turn that side upside down, it becomes RT, and we could put divided by 1, but of course if you divide any number by 1, it simply stays the same. So RT is equal to, in this case, we're going to go 240 divided by 19. So we've just flipped both of those upside down. We've lost the divide by one because it makes no difference to the calculation. And then we're going to say, what is 240 divided by 19? So 240 divided by 19 is going to give us uh, 12.63. We've got there 12.63. So that's the total resistance of the circuit. Now again, we're losing a little bit of accuracy now, okay, because we've got to round this off a little bit. Uh, this is actually a recurring uh, decimal. Uh, now a lot of learners when they saw this would go 12.6 with a dot over it, and they'd remember from school that a number with a dot over it means that that recurs. 
the problem is is that if that number recurs then the rest of this number becomes meaningless because you'd have 12.6 going on forever and then after infinity 315789 which doesn't make any sense if you scroll along with the answer what you actually find is that at the very end there there is a, a two with a dot above it and what that means is that because there's a dot at the start of that big long number and a dot at the end, it means that that whole chunk then repeats forever. So you repeat the whole chunk and the whole chunk again, then the whole chunk again. So just watch out for that if you're ever doing this kind of calculation because that can throw you off. However, what we've done is we've rounded this off to two decimal places, which should be accurate enough for what we're doing here. 12.63, the number after it is a one, so that three remains the same. So there we go. The total resistance is 12.63 ohms, which is a really nice and neat answer that we've got there. Okay, and then finally, we move on to step four, and this is kind of where the, uh, the magic happens, because for step four, what we're going to do, just want to pick a colour that I haven't used yet, we'll go for orange, hopefully that'll show up all right on camera. For step four, we're then going to figure out the total current flow again. So we figured it out here, it was 19 amps. So we're going to now say that the total uh, current flowing into the circuit, we're just going to find it a slightly different way. We're going to say that the total current will be equal to the supply voltage, the voltage that we've applied to the circuit, divided by the total resistance. And of course, we calculated the total resistance here. So we end up with uh, 240 volts divided by 12.63. Now we're going to notice something interesting at this point when we put this into the calculator. 240 divided by 12.63 is going to give us, when we press the SD button, 19 point now we've got 19.0023753 now if at this point we were to put in all of those decimal points that we locked off the earlier answer that we locked off here what we'd find is that that answer would be exactly 19 which is exactly the amount of current that we've got flowing into the circuit the reason that we've got those extra numbers there is that we've lost a little bit of accuracy here which is impacted on the answer here however if we take the same principle we rounded that to two decimal places if we round this to two decimal places then we've actually got 19 amperes again. So you can see there's kind of two ways of doing this. You can either find all the individual currents that flow into the circuit, add them together to find the total current, or you can find the total resistance of the circuit and then use that to calculate what the total current flowing into the circuit is. So if you do get this kind of question in the exam, read it really carefully because it may ask you to do it a certain way. It may ask you to show you're working out in a certain way if it's not a multiple choice exam or it may even ask you for one of the individual currents within the circuit. So do read the question really carefully, and perhaps your teacher may even ask you to kind of practice this whole process just as two different ways of calculating the same thing as a double check and to make sure that you understand the whole method. So that's quite important to do whatever your teacher tells you to do on that front as well. So we've looked at uh, circuit analysis for a parallel circuit. We did it practically in the previous video. In this video, we've done it purely mathematically with calculations and understanding this kind of circuit theory where you look at how currents split and behave and how each individual resistance affects the total current flowing into the circuit. It's really, really important for us as electricians to be able to understand this stuff so that we know how circuits work because we could actually literally be looking at a lighting circuit there and what it looks like. So important stuff. Hopefully it's made sense. If you've got any questions or if you've got any thoughts on this topic, then please leave them in the comments below. Uh, as always, if you've got this far in the video, you've done really well, so thank you for that. And uh, make sure that you're already subscribed and that you hit the like button. I'd much appreciate that. And then all that remains in this video is to say thank you very much for watching.